listening to the Retail Razor Show, where your expert hosts and their guests cut through the clutter in retail and retail tech to shape the future of retail. Hello and welcome to Season 3, Episode 9 of the Retail Razor Show. I'm your host, Ricardo Belmar. And I'm your co-host, Casey Golden. Welcome to Retail's favorite podcast for product junkies, commerce technologists, and everyone else in retail and retail tech alike. Well, Casey, we've got big news to kick off this episode. We are once again teaming up for a few episodes with Jeff Roster, host of This Week in Innovation podcast, to bring our listeners and YouTube viewers a series of super amazing interviews recorded live and in person at Grocery Shop 2023. Again, I wish I could have been there to join you too. The lineup for these interviews is quite impressive. Were you guys gonna are you gonna kill us with the suspense by sharing the whole list or dropping crumbs? I think a little suspense is a good thing. So I guess we can clue everyone in on this episode's guess and give a, a small but tasty preview of what's coming up in the next few episodes. Awesome. Since I know what the list is, I guess I'm I'm cool with that. So for the this episode, you and Jeff recorded a fantastic recap by going straight to the source of all things grocery shop with Christina Gustafson, SVP of content, and Ben Miller, director of original content. Yeah, faithful fans will recognize that this is Christina's third time on the podcast, having been on to give us the rundown on this year's Shop Talk and last year's Grocery Shop. And it's Ben's second visit, too, after having been on with us at Shop Talk this year. They're both absolutely fantastic. And I'm so glad you guys were able to connect with them and get them on the mic for this recap. So before we get into Christina and Ben's thoughts, tell our listeners what you thought were some of the biggest takeaways from the show. Yeah, so I really gravitate to three themes. Uh, The first one, I can call it going practical, meaning less emphasis on big, shiny objects uh, like we've seen in past shows. Uh, I think that's probably a recurring theme at most retail events this year. It's all about what can we do now that's going to improve our profitability versus what pie in the sky thing can we do someday in the future. Second big theme, and this is probably a a no-brainer to everybody, it said AI is everywhere. Every speaker had something to say about AI, ranging from, we've been using this for years, just not saying AI every time we speak out loud. So picking the right partner to work with for your AI strategy and how critical that is, to we're doing a lot with AI right now, and we're getting started with generative AI as the next big step, and pretty much everything you can think of in between those ranges with all the talk going on uh, with AI. Uh, And then the third thing, and this, again, certainly to our listeners, uh, a fairly obvious one, the continuing evolution of retail media networks. And do both Christina and Ben, are they, do they agree with you? I guess listeners are going to have to listen into the conversation (laughs) to find out. But okay, I'll say, yeah, pretty much agree. I think to their credit, uh, they go a bit deeper and expand on these three themes and add a few others to, to really bring home the big highlights from the show. Well, with that build up, I can't wait to just jump in and listen to you and Jeff Roster sit down with Christina and Ben. But before we get to it, are you going to drop some hints as to the rest of the live interviews? Well, I will. What I'll say is that we had a sort of partial retail Avengers reunion in one of those where we talk about the startup community at Grocery Shop and some important trends for the future grocery. Uh, Then we had a couple of returning guests in one of those. We're going to really dig into what's new in retail media networks, which, of course, I mentioned we're going to hear about some of that as a theme of the show in this episode. And then our other returning guest is actually from earlier this season, somebody who came to give us a really exciting update on the progress of their, let's say, unique application of spatial computing that I I think everyone will make sure they don't want to miss. Okay, well, I've got a few guesses from those hints. And if our listeners have some guesses, we want to see you post on LinkedIn and Twitter or on Good Pods. And maybe our next episode, we'll let everyone know how those guesses came in. We'll have a big shout out to anyone that guesses correctly. There may be a prize. Engage. I don't think anyone will get them all. I'd be impressed. But I do love a good competition. (laughs) <laughs> so hopefully those hints I dropped are helpful. Uh, otherwise, we'll just have to wait and see who comes on the show next time. Well, at least there was no 80s pop culture reference in the intro. Oh, oh I am definitely going to remember that for next time. 
<laughs> I can't All right. let those go. Well, let's jump in to our crossover episode with the great conversation you and Jeff Roster had with Christina Gustafson and Ben Miller. So we're here on day three at Grocery Shop 2023. And once again, on, we're teaming up with This Week in Innovation and host Jeff Roster. Jeff, how are you today on day three? I am exhausted. I think that's a general I trend. I didn't realize it was five hours ago, we were having to debate about OT in the lobby. Yes, yeah, so one of those evening research opportunities that we always talk about. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Out on out on the beach. So good good way to start, try to end or start. I guess we're starting day three strong because we've got two of our favorite guests on the show, Christina Gustafson and Ben Miller from the grocery shop team. Christina, Ben, thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. So why don't we start with, I guess, maybe, maybe the obvious question we always start with is tell us a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, this year's show compared to last year. How's the, what, what are we up to on attendees? It's listening like some kind of a good, good crowd this year. So I imagine that there's good growth from last year. And uh, I know the, the one-on-one meetings must be, wow, they just have to be incredibly successful coming out of Shop Talk in the spring. So fill us in a little bit on, on what that looks like. Yeah, sure. I'm happy to take that one. Um, so you're right. Uh, the show is bigger and better than ever. We we love that we can actually truthfully say that every year. Um, <laughs> so uh, we were 4,000 plus attendees this year. But um, quite frankly, I think it's it's less the number and sort of the quality of the audience that we're really proud of. Um, our retailers and brands team has been really focused on putting retailers and brands really at the heart of everything that we do. And so a big part of that strategy has been going out um, to companies and, and building, I would say, more partnerships um, than versus kind of, hey, come to the show to do X, Y, Z. It's kind of, you know, what do you want to achieve? What can we help you accomplish as an organization? You know, can we help you bring together folks from your e-com teams who are dispersed across the country and don't get a chance to work together from day to day? Um, do you want to meet with tech vendors? You know, what can we help you sort of discover? What can we, you know, really help you with? So that's been a really good strategy. We're seeing a lot of um, big groups from large retailers and brands. So um, I was uh, with a friend uh, last night from Kraft Heinz, and I think she said they had about 18 people here. Um, another friend uh, wow. from Coca-Cola was saying they have about 20 people here. I know Albertsons, Hy-Vee, yeah. et cetera, are all sort of in those double digits. So um, I think that's that's probably the thing on the audience front um, that we're most proud of. But, but to your point about the meetings program, yes, that has been a huge game changer for us. So <laughs> I believe, Ben, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think it was 70,000 meetings coming into the show that we had already done through Shop Talk and Shop Talk Europe, and then right. another 25,000 um, at Grocery Shop alone. So wow. that's using our new meetup platform where effectively any one of our attendees can request to meet with anyone else. Um, our platform takes um, you know, their selections, their opt-ins, matches everyone um, to, to just kind of maximize the amount of 15-minute uh, face-to-face meetings that folks can have with partners, um, you know, whether it's tech partners, retail brand partners. You know, I could go in and say, hey, I'm really looking for a mentor, and I could meet you know, a woman from another organization. So the possibilities are really endless. And I think the fact that it's really sort of um, rooted in technology, uh, like many of our uh, attendees, that's our, our big differentiator. Yeah, I, I definitely say just from my experience with the meeting program, it's such a great opportunity to have conversations with people you probably otherwise wouldn't meet or, or wouldn't have the opportunity to. So I think that is a pretty, pretty strong differentiator versus other events that, that we all go to. So what was really interesting for me about the whole meetup concept is initially I didn't really get it because it was so counter to how I'd operated as an analyst forever. Um, but man, does that, that is insane how efficient that time is. And what what's also amazing, if I had it to do over again, I would just hang out in the meetup zone because you meet, so, you're basically going to meet the whole conference there because they're either waiting to go in or they're coming back out or that three minute time frame in between each, each 15 minute a meeting, you know, you can bump into people. I bumped into two people I hadn't connected with in forever that were sitting yeah. right across from me. You look over and go, oh, hey, how you doing? So it's, uh, I don't know whose idea that was, but that, that's, that, that no is. one at this table, we can't take credit. Exactly. I would 100% <laughs> take credit for it. Are, are you kidding me? That That's really maybe the most efficient time I've yeah. ever seen. And being an analyst, I always ask the vendors, more so even than the retailers, um, how they found it. And I remember the first First couple of times it was done, eh, you know, they did. and today, and let's see, what is this, my fourth, uh, fourth one of those meetups, um, I've not heard anything negative because people know how to use it. Yeah. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. 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 We'll come and talk about some of the themes of the event and so much conversation about retail media and close loop attribution. You know, this is our play in that space because through Meta, 
for the tech vendors who invest in um, buying some meetings, they can get close loop attribution. They can measure the impact of their investment right. through the conversations right. that they have. And it delivers an ROI unparalleled anywhere in the event space. Have you seen a sophistication with how people use those 15 minutes? Like over the last X number of years? I think the big thing we've seen is people recognizing they can get incredible value, but you've got to put in a little bit of effort first. You've got to spend a bit of time. It's, it's like the content program as well. We run four simultaneous tracks of content at grocery shop. If you turn up on day one and think, oh, what do I want to see? You, you, you're sort yeah. of chasing your tail. Totally. Um, yeah, you get overwhelmed. You put a little bit of time in and then you, you can pick and bespoke and completely personalize your tour. And of course, this year, for the first time, we've also added onto the same platform all of our networking opportunities. So not only can you plan your meetings, you can plan your content, you can also plan the dinners you want to go to, the breakfast you want to go to, uh, and that's creating a whole new opportunity for our sponsor partners and our vendors to set up new meetings and get more visibility of who's attending. And for our attendees, they can plan to be wine dined and partied as much or as little as they want. Yeah, Whose idea was to do the networking events like that because it it literally shows everything out there and, you, and then you submit your request and then you go through the whole process and what what a clever idea well that's yeah. very clever i think at the end of the day it sort of uh, goes back to where we started uh, with anil agarwal founding the company um mm -hmm. back in i guess it was 2015 2016 um he is still uh leading the tech arm um building all the technology capabilities that we use and so i think just kind of his knowledge of the business the strategy what we're trying to accomplish paired with the fact Apologies. Um, that he has that tech background um, and is able to to really kind of bring it to life. That that's some of the secret yeah. sauce there. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's pretty pretty special, I think, for for the event overall. So so let's talk about the themes. Um, you know, tell tell us what you know. You I always like the uh, you guys have this one session where you go through the zeitgeist of what are the big themes. So kind of walk us through what the big themes are for this grocery shop. So look, really big picture. We'll call out a couple and then we'll we'll, we'll sort of dive in. Um, I guess the, probably the big four have been unified commerce, mm -hmm. uh, retail media, artificial intelligence, and no surprise mm -hmm. there. I think we've done really yeah. well within 10 minutes, and that's our first mention <laughs> of AI. And, th and thank you for that, by the way. And then really the whole conversation around how to grow and how to invest in the current climate and what does growth and investment look like for the future. Yeah. I think there's other things we've seen going on under there. Yeah making sure your organization is future fit and what the structures are, unpicking customer sentiment and how it's diverging here in the US, conversations around shrink and loss. But I think the first few are, have been the really big ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, well, since we already managed to get the mention for AI in, I'll ask a question <laughs> first. <laughs> um, one thing I noted that I thought was really interesting here uh, versus, I guess I'll say, earlier in the year, um, almost all of the sessions where I heard people on stage talking about what they're doing with AI, uh, two things I noted. One is that, that was the conversation was, what are we doing with it? It yeah. wasn't, mm -hmm. what do we think we're going to do someday down the road? Yeah. Or what do we think the potential is? It's here's what we've done. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we intend to keep doing for the next six months. That, to me, that was the undertone of all of those AI conversations. And then the other thing that I noted at least a couple of times was people talking about how they prepared the organization mm -hmm. for AI. Because I think one of the things that gets lost in a lot of the AI conversations is that it's all about the quality of the data you put into the AI mm -hmm. to start with. And there were a couple of speakers I thought were super interesting because they talked about, uh, you know, how they got to clean data, what they had to do in their organization to make sure they had strong, clean data before they started layering the AI strategy on top. Because they understood that if we put, you know, garbage in, you get garbage out, right? You can't trust the AI output if you don't know that the data is clean going into it. And so they talked about, you know, what are they doing in their organization to have that kind of readiness and to have that kind of uh, regimen around, you know, having good data? Uh, so those were two interesting things I picked up because I, I, you haven't heard that, I think, as much in the AI conversation yet. I completely agree. And there's a couple of models that we've been working on and we've been spending a lot of time as a team looking at the broader AI opportunity and also specifically the generative AI opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, you yeah, know, that's a lot of fun because... When we were a grocery shop and we were doing this this time last year, chat GPT hadn't even been lodged by then. Out yet. So yeah. Yeah, we've been able to spend a lot of time thinking about, okay, well, what does that mean? And, and inviting the industry to come and talk about it. But I think on, on the, taking the data point first, 100%. So we, we put a model out there this week where we we're talking about how you do any level of personalization in grocery. 
And we know grocery is harder to do personalization in than other categories because of you know, high volume, multi-item basket, low margins. You know, you're, not, you're not having that one-on-one interaction where you're buying a, a new watch or a bit of fine jewelry. Mm-hmm. It, right, right. But there, you know, it is possible. And we're starting to see the, the elements of the tech stack building. But the first thing, you can't leave it without data. And you know, actually, we're really looking at grocery and CPG because retailer loyalty schemes have provide a lot of the data. Now, is it in the right place? Is it in the right form? Who owns that data? Um, how can the retailers activate on the CPGs? So lots of really interesting conversations, but the data is there to be used. Um, and there was a really fascinating conversation on day one of the event where uh, one of our speakers, Deepak from Mars Wrigley, mm-hmm. talked about a data lake that he and his team had built and they spent a long time building. And I forget the size, but it was into terabytes of data. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they discovered after a year that 70% of the data points in the data lake had only been accessed once. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there is one thing about finding data. There's another thing getting it in the right place. And then it's another thing building the tools that can actually be activated to make decisions against it. Well, and Ricardo, to your point too about the structure, I, I caught part of Deepak's session as well. And uh, one of the questions that he was asked was sort of, you know, how do you actually structure a team these days to make sure that everyone has access to the data or or is really sort of data enabled? He's like, oh, I love that question because if I had answered it a year ago, I would have answered it completely differently yeah. than I'm going to answer it. <laughs> so it just kind of speaks to the pace of right. change that, that right. we're yeah. all experiencing yeah. and the fact that, you know, every sort of incremental innovation really does kind of transform how you're thinking about mm-hmm. everything from processes, technologies, all the way to to your org structure. Yeah, yeah. So we we dug around and we, we built a bit of a model. We're looking at Gen AI specifically and we identified over 20 use cases that we see a, a potentially transformative for um, the use of generative, just generative AI in grocery. And I think there's been two really interesting conversations. One is um, people that get their businesses using these tools now. You can't wait because mm-hmm. the technology is moving so fast, particularly in generative AI, that if you wait, you'll miss the boat completely. At the same time, there's a whole range of unknowns. So I think you'll have heard some of these practical use cases, so many of them have been about internal inefficiency. Mm-hmm. So how do you protect your data and you protect your customers by unlocking the efficiency gains whilst also giving the time and space to build kind of the guardrails to go around it um, in terms of um, you know, security, making sure you don't deliver unwanted results, you know, releasing this technology unfettered. Uh, and then the second stage has been some of the great conversations around recognizing that Artificial intelligence in the broader sense has been around for a long time. And great, we've got this new shiny bit that's really exciting. But actually, so many of the use cases and so many examples people have been talking about have been you know, a range of AI tools mm-hmm. that are helping to increasingly underpin their business models and drive their businesses. I think that's been really interesting conversations. Yeah, I agree. I think, too, um, what I found really interesting, uh, we I don't know if you saw Ben McCain from Hungry Root on the keynote mm-hmm. stage, but, yes, uh, you know, yeah. the whole topic of his keynote was AI and the generative AI portion was just this little tiny bit. Right. You know, he was talking right. about sort of hard constraints, soft constraints. Okay. You know, if you're a vegetarian, I surely can't, uh, I, I surely can't suggest, uh, you know, a meat-based meal for you. Oh, but if you say you kind of like taco seasoning, okay, maybe I can kind of sneak that in there. And so just kind of thinking about, you know, how they've been able to use AI um, in those cases. And then I think he described it as sort of AI selects, um, you know, what is in your basket and then generative AI explains to you why we, we selected that and, and put it in your basket. And so just hearing him kind of articulate mm-hmm. it, um, yeah. I think was really eye opening. Yeah. He, he speaks so eloquently about the topic yeah. and, and just kind of how they're using it currently and what, what the opportunity is. But I would say the other thing that was really interesting was uh, him talking about how they leave it really behind the curtain, right? You know, mm-hmm. you don't go to their website, you right. don't see a chat that's right, bot that's yeah. like, hi, I'm your you know, AI <laughs> yeah. assistant, let me build a basket for you. It's really just kind of about <laughs> right. using it to deliver in. that yeah. seamless yeah. experience. Yeah, I thought that that was pretty fascinating when he made those comments about how they're, they're not out in front trying to tell the world that this is your AI mm-hmm. solution to help you do X, Y, and Z. It's yeah. just kind of behind the scenes. Exactly. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah. Very interesting. So, so let's go to your, the next one, which you know which one I'm going to go to, which would be retail media, <laughs> <laughs> which hopefully we'll have enough time in this podcast to get through it. <laughs> uh, I think retail media has been such an interesting conversation at this event. So we knew retail media was going to be big going in, and we spent a lot of time thinking about what's next for retail media. Because, uh, you know, with shop talk and grocery shop events, we always want to be thinking about what's coming next and, and, and pushing the future. So we spent a lot of time thinking about the in-store opportunity. You know, 12% of U.S. grocery is 
online. So you take the delta of that, and nearly 90% of US groceries still in physical stores. So what's the opportunity to take some of the thinking around retail media and, and apply it to the physical space? And we had some great conversations about inventory from smart carts to cooler screen doors, et cetera, et cetera. I think the joke was if there's a, a, a shot to put any sort of digital screen in a store, uh, yeah. retailers are going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what we've what we found a lot of the conversation on the shop floor is about has been at new media networks mm-hmm. coming up, and and really how do you have that almost permission to play? So yeah, on the keynote stage we had some really really big stats. So you know, JJ Fleeman. The CEO of Ahol Delez in the US told us that their AD retail networks, uh, media networks growing 70%. Uh, Ronnie McMullen, Kroger on day one, did the opening keynote. He gave the number of 1.2 billion incremental revenue right. that you're yeah. generating from all their adjacent revenue streams. But I think a combination of their data services and their, uh, and their media network. So some really big numbers, the size of the prize. Uh, but I think some of the really interesting retailer conversations has been about recognizing they've got to bring something special, unique, and different. Um, so we've got Hy-Vee coming up on the keynote stage mm-hmm. later today. Really excited about that. You know, just last week, Supermarket yeah. News have uh, awarded them Retail of the Year for 2023. So they've got a really interesting story to tell. And they've chosen this event to launch their media network. And we're going to talk about, well, you know, what gives you permission to play? Yeah, what's new and different? Yeah. And their mindset is thinking like a marketing agency. So how can I deliver a special, unique and different audience reach that you can't be got elsewhere? So it was really interesting to hear retailers thinking and talking like that. Um, I did a great panel yesterday afternoon where with Snooks Market, uh, okay. so Dave Steck, he, he, he's fantastic. We talked about yeah. retail media and he said, look, we're not playing in that area yet because we haven't got something different to offer. So right. what they're doing is they're talking to other regional grocers in non-competing and non-overlapping um, markets to see if they can generate some scale. Because they know yeah. there's a recognition that if you go to CPGs, you've got to come with something that people want to invest in. I mean, it's really interesting. Yeah, and you then- know, that's so clever because I, it, I had drinks with, with Dave. And, and the idea, and the important idea, because you remember our conversation with Andrew, right. how many retail media networks and what was his yeah. number? 30 to, 30 to 40. 30 to 60. Dave just blew that out of the water because now it's not 30 to 60. It's, it's regional and maybe even by, you know, sub regionals or whatever, two, three, four oh, people yeah. grouping together. That's, that's, I mean, that's a yeah. game changer. I mean, the, the Walton Business School at Uni of Arkansas last year, um, they identified over 600 different retail media networks and they're just oh. doing the research again this year. Um, oh, so we've got a, we've got a conversation coming up this afternoon all about retail media networks. And, um, you know, look, we as a team, um, vet, vet and choose every single speaker that comes mm-hmm. on the program. It's all editorial led, no sponsors. And we brief every single speaker, every single moderator. And then the moderators and the speakers get together and we get to yeah. listen in. So you know, it's incredibly privileged the conversations that we get to hear. So I know that one of the conversations that's going to be had this afternoon on the subject of retail media is about the CPG increasingly looking at segmentation. And one of them is going to share a really simple free, free bucket segmentation, which is number one, who are the media networks that we just have to be on? Yeah. Cause commercially, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to invest in Walmart. So you've got sure, one sure, bucket number sure, one. Yeah. And yeah. others. Bucket number two, who gets me a unique, special and different audience that I can do some really mm-hmm. interesting bespoken focus activation with? Then everybody else is a bucket number three and. Mm-hmm. How do we have a presence so our commercial relationships isn't damaged without too much focus? So could that be aggregators? Could that be using third parties, using agencies to manage their relationships so we can put all of our efforts in the first two? And I think for all the retailers in the room, I think we're hearing an understanding of that. So they're going back and saying, we're now the salespeople. Mm-hmm. What are we going to sell in this space? Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. think that dynamic has been stronger this year than I've seen it before. Yeah. I mean, I agree in what you're saying, Jeff, too, right? It's like, I can't remember who said it. It might have been even better at Shop Talk, but someone was like, Mark Pritchard's not going to go out and buy retail media, at like, you know, Joe Schmo sort of regional player that only has 12 stores, right? It's just right, simply yeah. not it's just going not to happen. happen. So yeah. Yeah. consolidation is inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, so I, I guess one, maybe one last question to to go through, kind of coming back to where we started on. You know, what's your feeling on the the general tone uh, from attendees at the show, like general mood and, and feeling of from where they started on, on day one to where you think they're ending on day three? Yeah, I love this question because I feel like I've been very shocked at how upbeat everyone is, right? Like mm-hmm. coming into the show, one of our big themes and, and sort of theses was, okay, there's inflation. Consumers are like, what are they even doing? It, right? It's like kind <laughs> right. of this yeah, bifurcation. Right. And Rodney well, sales are up that. 2%. Oh, uh, oh except but, for the inflation. Yeah, except that it's all driven by inflation. Right. Minor, yeah. minor, minor issue. Detail. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, we certainly have been hearing a focus on, as Ben was saying before, investing for efficiencies, right? So it sort of feels in a lot of ways like a back to basics approach, I think even of like Target, right? I know they've had some some hiccups lately, but it feels like a lot of investments that they've been making when they've been executing really well are things like, how do we make curbside more seamless? You know, how mm-hmm. do we, you know, add incremental revenue by, you know, incorporating Starbucks into that? And so it, it kind of feels like that mentality is kind of um, percolating, I would say, throughout the industry where they're, you know, definitely looking at some of these new technologies like a Gen AI, but oftentimes thinking about it um, in sort of an immediate ROI with an immediate ROI lens. It was interesting too. Um, you know, even on the supply chain session yesterday, we were hearing Natin from um, EJ Gallo just kind of talking about, you know, how they're looking at um, generative AI to sort of simplify things in the supply chain. So, so I guess my point is, even even when it is sort of these, I guess, shiny objects, for lack of a better term, it's all kind of coming back to, you know, how do we operate more efficiently, more yeah. profitably, et cetera. So there is certainly a lens of that. But I guess I was expecting a lot more conversations that were like doom and gloom and what's the consumer <laughs> doing? And oh, my God, we're struggling. And how are we going right. to get by? And yeah. like, yeah. it hasn't felt like that. And, and, you know, circling back to where we started the conversation, the fact that people are still sending big teams to an event like this that yeah. are focused on exploring right. technologies like I don't know. It's just it, it feels very optimistic to me, and mm-hmm. I don't think mm-hmm. I was expecting yeah. that yes. again. Yeah, and 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 I know I noticed too, and I'm sure you have as well. That exactly along that line, that the um that back to basics idea. There's an element of you know real world this to a realistic uh, approach to things where the um we've all been to past events and things, and I'll I'll go back to. I mean, I think we talked about this last year's shop talk, right? You know, there was multiple shiny objects. Yeah. That were that were constantly yes. being talked about in almost every session on the floor that didn't really materialize a year later. But now it doesn't feel like that. I think you're absolutely right, Christine. It feels more like there's this realism element. There's what can I do with this right now? How is this going yeah. to make my business better? And everyone's talking about practical use cases. And I think too, there was a lesson learned there, right? Um, you know, when we were sort of you know flashing back a couple of years ago, and, and to your point, everyone was kind of throwing everything at one potential technology. Um, and thinking about, okay, how do I organize, how do I reorganize in mm. order to support this and, you know, do X, Y, Z. And it was interesting ch- chatting with Monica McGurk, um, from Tropicana Brands Group on the keynote stage. And, you know, I just kind of asked her because they're building, um, a lot of their tech stack from the ground up right now. They have a really unique opportunity having just been spun off from PepsiCo, you know, two years ago to really kind of build everything from the ground up. And I was sort of, you know, asking her when you have that opportunity, because we've been hearing from folks in the industry, oh, you're going to have to tear up the org chart. You're going to have to tear up all your platforms. You're going to have to tear up all your processes. Because Gen AI is kind of, you know, the future. And she was like, you know, we're taking a little bit more of a measured approach. Yeah. We're thinking mm-hmm. about, you know, yeah. how we can sort of plug this in and certainly, you know, making sure we're hiring people that that have this knowledge base. But I think there is that recognition that you can explore things, um, mm-hmm. kind of set that strategy from the top and and think about how different functional units can plug into that strategy. But it feels like there's, um, I don't know, just I don't want to call it caution, right? But but yeah. more more. Thought. Thoughtfulness to it's, it. It's yeah. a yeah. maturation in the, yeah. in the innovation process. Yeah. And I think maybe that might be a benefit mm. from that hideous experience called COVID where all these yeah. retailers had to accelerate their um, byline pickup in the store. They had to survive, you know, right, uh, right. Uh, extinction level uh, scenario in their business. Mm. And they, they are now four years, three years later with a far more mature approach to innovation, which allows, I mean, anybody that would say uh, we have to tear everything up. That's, an, I mean, that there's no way that's going to work. It can't yeah, work. How, and so how do work? we how do we innovate inside the existing business while mm-hmm. then going? I mean, there was that's a, music to my ears. I mean, we've we've already given Deepak from Mars two shout outs. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm sorry. Jesus, he's the best. He's the best. Yeah. So he's but, uh, wow. There was there was a, a third line that he gave, which I thought was really interesting. Was in their business, their mindset has gone from how do we build to last to how do we build to adapt. And that is a great line. And in grocery. We've often built to last. And I think that's, that's right. really interesting yeah. Yeah. across physical stores and across CPG structures. And then I mean, the last point, we, we, we sat around last night as a team and we, we were talking about you know, what has been really interesting. What have we heard as big so far? What have we, what have we spent this come today? What are we going to lead into? And what haven't we heard? And 
I think we summed up what haven't we heard in one word, and that was doom. There's not yeah. been right. Right. doom around this event. We, I think Rodney McMullen was really interesting. He talked about you know, diverging customer sentiment. And there is a whole group of consumers in the US who are finding it really tough. His wages haven't followed inflation. And we're seeing a whole series of behavior changes. There's also a whole series of customers who are doing really well. And that divergence is meaning, actually, you know what? There is still growth to be found. Inflation is easing. There is some volume coming back in. And there's a bit more volume uh, forecast to come into the market. Mm -hmm. And it's creating a more kind of dynamic, optimistic yeah. uh, gr event, show, and industry than I think we'd expected coming into the show. I think yeah. when you think about retail slashes grocery, the one thing we all need are groceries, where the department stores might have more of a, a an issue in in you know in the shop talk world. Yeah. Where groceries, this something we is, all shop for. And in an inflationary scenario, groceries maybe the restaurant business is the one that's that's feeling that impact. Where you know we're all eating more, we're all you know are we eating we're eating more at home because it you know it's a way of countering. I mean, there's there's really some interesting examples of a couple of startups here that um, can analyze. Uh, uh, credit card purchases. It's a part of a loyalty program as well as cash purchases. Mm -hmm. And so you, it's a, it's fetch. It's one of your yes. exhibitors. And a 15 minute meeting, I hadn't bumped into them. It was unbelievable what they can predict because yeah. they, they, because they, they have taught their, their, their users to, to scan in their cash purchases. They're the only place I've ever seen a complete per, per, uh, picture of the purchasing. They believe that they can track the impact of inflation from high end dog food. To, but down to the customer level to a cheaper version or even making your own dog food at home, which I didn't even know you could do. <laughs> so apparently you can do that. And by the way, it's maybe more healthy going back to our dog conversation. <laughs> but think, it always ends up with dogs. That's think right. About, think, about, think about what they're able to look at is the impact of all this in, in, in this particular part of retail. It's yeah. also a good shout because um, to, to Ben's point, uh, not to preview too much that's about to happen today, but we're actually going to have a couple of sessions talking about sort of the convergence of QSR, um, mm. grocery and convenience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so we got a couple of folks on that session and just kind of talking about um, the prepared foods opportunity. I know we've been talking about that for a couple of years in grocery, but mm -hmm. um, it just feels even more real it, to your point. Ramped, I don't want to yeah. cook. I don't want to spend yeah. the money to right. go out to eat at a restaurant. So how do you so really I, how, do I, how do I split the difference? Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's hard to yeah. eat that rotisserie chicken that I, that I see in the grocery store. Yeah, you, right. can't, you can't do that you at home. You can't do that as home as nice. It's, and, it's, and, and, you know, and it's ready to go. Yeah, not at that price point either. Not at that price point. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I think that maybe the last thing I'll mention too, which we've kind of hinted at that I, I also noticed, and I'll, I'll do a quick shout out to one of the speakers I enjoyed was Pravash Kazwadi from Heritage Grocers, because he uh, really emphasized collaboration um, between all the partners that they work with on the technology side too, that are helping them do this. Uh, and he made the point of highlighting, saying, you know, no one should feel like we have to figure this out on our own. You know, we need to actually, in a sense, take advantage of <laughs> all of the providers who are delivering these, these things and understand what they can and can't do and then work together with them to, to do the kinds of things they want to do, whether it's the AI or the retail media or any other technology pieces. And that's, that was another sort of undertone I've, I've heard is this idea that we need, there needs to be more collaboration and that it's okay to do that. I agree. And, and I heard that in, in two separate places, coming back to our, our bigger points from earlier. One was in artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. There was a great keynote conversation and, and the conversation was put to... Um, Viral, who is Chief Digital Officer of Nestle uh, for the, in, in North America. And a conversation was put to him of where are you on build versus buy? Mm. Great question. Yeah, great question. To which question. he said, there is no grocer or CPG company that's got the ability to build AI and generative AI tools. <laughs> so it's not even a conversation. We have to partner. <laughs> right, and, right. and I thought that was, that was really interesting. And then secondly, when we go into retail media, clearly just before... We met this week. You know, IAB have put out their sort of standards right, yeah, for in retail media, yeah, and yeah. you know, I think the people I've spoken to, it's 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 seen as an important step in the journey. Uh, obviously, it's not the finished article. We need to look at adoption yet, but it's a really good first and really solid piece of work to try and move the, the industry forward in a collaborative way. Because mm -hmm. if we want to really maximize efficiency in retail media, and everyone generating the ROI they want, we need some sort of standardization in terms right. of managing things. So I think we're starting to see in the really big areas that we've talked about, retail media, artificial intelligence, a recognition that got to collaborate and the industry will move forward for more collaboration. 
Yep, no, I completely agree. Completely I mean, agree. and that's the maturation of the grocer executive too. That that you know can just begin to absorb more technology and then drive those conversations with the vendors. Because twenty years ago, it was the consultants that would be driving those conversations and dictating. Right. Because we just we as an industry weren't weren't, weren't really ready, and so yeah. now post all this sort of boom around innovation, we have a far, far better ecosystem to, to operate in. And the fact that you can get so many retail executives, 20 years ago, that was a dream to have a retail executive get up and talk about what they never would have ever done that because it wasn't, just wasn't kosher. So I'm going to finish with one lovely story that, that Vera from Nestle shared about, and, and the question was put to him, where's the pressure coming to you from, particularly around AI? Is it coming from your team? And the broader business shouting, what can I do? Is it coming from internal sources or is it coming from your boss? And he, he didn't hesitate to say, it's coming from the CEO. I, I get a couple of emails every day with articles saying, have you read this? Yeah. What are we going to do? And he says, the amazing thing is whenever he sends me them, I put it into chat GPT and I get a two minute summary. So I don't even need to read the articles anymore. <laughs> Even even that process can be made efficient. Oh my god, <laughs> love that. That's great. That's great. No, that's a great, it's phenomenal. That's a that's a that's a great. But it's a perfect example, yeah, it's right? It's a great yeah. vision of where we are in the yeah. industry. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Ben, Christina, well, wow, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been another fantastic conversation. Uh, congrats on another great yeah. grocery shop event. We've got the rest of day three ahead of us. I'm really looking forward to even more great content. And heard absolutely nothing negative from the vendors I talked to. By the way. That's great. Look, thank you for having us send on again, all, guys. Send all the thanks to us, you know. There you go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Believe well, yeah. me, I would yeah. hear it too. <laughs> <laughs> We're always looking to get better. So in all seriousness, um, um, if yeah. anyone listening does have any feedback or want to connect with Ben and I, um, please feel free to shoot us a note. I'm always lo looking to hear how we can get better. So, Fantastic. All Excellent. right. Well, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. If you enjoyed our show, please consider giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Remember to smash that subscribe button in your favorite podcast player or watch us on YouTube so you don't miss a minute. If you want to know more about what we talked about today, take a look at the show notes for handy links and more deets. And if you haven't tried the Good Pods player yet, give them a spin and follow our show. We recently hit the top of the charts for indie management and marketing podcasts. We love our new Hello. listeners coming from Good Pods. I'm your co-host, Casey Golden. And if you'd like to connect with us and share your feedback, follow us and the show on Twitter at KCC Golden, Ricardo underscore Belmar, and at Retail Razor. Or just find us on LinkedIn. And if you want even more from us, be sure and subscribe to our Substack newsletter that includes full episode transcripts and bonus content. I'm your host, Ricardo Belmar. Thanks for joining us. And remember, there's never been a better time to be in retail if you cut through the clutter. Until next time, this is the Retail Razor Show.